What I've appreciated about your stance on this is you're very fair-minded, I think, in recognizing that for some kids, this is a really viable option. And you can have parents who are homeschooling kids for the best of reasons. You know, as you point out, kids with disabilities or who have special and unique needs who may benefit from that. But there are people who misuse this opportunity for homeschooling to sort of hide children away. So can you just talk a little bit about some of the unique factors with homeschooling that might make it more vulnerable to misuse by parents who might not have the best of intentions in terms of their reasons for seeking to do it? Yeah, Teresa, absolutely. And so like you alluded to, a majority of homeschooling parents have their child's best interest in mind and they're doing it with the best of intentions. And so we have modeled our policy recommendations and what we believe to be responsible homeschooling after what these families are already doing to minimize any burdens. We don't want to make it harder for a family to homeschool their child. But you're absolutely right that through our own research, we have found that there are offenders, there are child abusers that are taking advantage of lax homeschooling policy to further isolate and abuse children. They are taking advantage of, you know, what we give to responsible homeschooling families and using it to hurt children. And so that is what we found through our Homeschooling Invisible Children database. And so this is a searchable database. We've collected over 600 cases, and these are just the cases that make media coverage. These are our major cases, the Turpin case, the Hart case, situations in which these children are severely abused and neglected under the disguise of homeschooling. We've collected it in this database so that we can elicit different themes and find out what is the underlying cause, what is allowing these people to abuse the system, abuse homeschooling, and hurt children.